Hello, and welcome to this lesson on the Interactive Brokers Client Portal API. In this lesson, we will be discussing how to place orders, how to view active orders, and how to request executions as a financial advisor. To begin, we need to address how allocation group management works in the Client Portal API at this time. In order to create or make any modifications to existing allocation groups, this must be done through the Trader Workstation. The same names and allocations are used by the Client Portal API as it is in the Trader Workstation, so there's no unique process needed for making these available for API use. Assuming we have created our allocation groups, we can move over to building our request. We want to begin by querying the iServer forward slash accounts endpoint. This will return a list all connected accounts, all allocation group names, and will also reference the default all allocation group. Now that we can find the exact groups we are working with, let's start by placing a few orders. To begin, we can place an order for our allocation group, video group. This group includes all sub accounts for my financial advisor. To begin, we will use a structure similar to what was used in our prior lesson for placing an order. I will make a limit buy for 100 Apple stock with a limit price of 190. Now, this is the point in which we can make modifications unique for financial advisors. Our standard endpoint is iServer forward slash account forward slash account ID forward slash orders for a specific account. But in our case, we can simply modify the account ID field to match our allocation group name. So I will set the value of account ID equal to our video group to match our intended allocation group. Now, if we look at the response message, we should see an order ID, our order status, and the encrypt message response. This is a typical sign of a successful order placement. As another example of FA order placement, we can tweak our current order, but instead of using the allocation group name, I can instead specify one of my sub accounts. When I place an order with this assigned, I will trigger an order just for this sub account, but no other sub accounts will be affected. We can see the response message, order ID, and order status once again. Now that we have a few orders on the books, we can get a better idea of how to view them after the fact by changing my active account. Using our standard framework, I will set my endpoint variable to iServer forward slash account. Then I will set my account body variable to an array. We can create the account ID tag and set it equal to our sub accounts account ID. Sending out this request, we can see a 200 OK response with the body tags of set equal to true and an indicator that account ID is set to our specified account. After setting the account, we just need to make a get request the iServer forward slash account forward slash orders endpoint as we have done in our prior tutorial. And we will see all the live traded orders this session for this account. Here I can see my latest Apple order, how much has been filled, my limit price set, and so on. While this is just one example of using the iServer forward slash account endpoint to view details, you will need to use this methodology from many other similar endpoints. You may have noticed that our orders request only showed one order placed to this individual, but we did not see any information on the original order placed to the video group allocation group. In order to find these values, you must query them separately. Similar to the process we just made to view the individual accounts order, we can use the iServer account endpoint to look at our video group allocation group orders as well. After calling the account endpoint, then requerying the orders endpoint, we can see our other order. At this point, we placed an order to a sub account and a group, and then reviewed each of their live orders. The next logical step would be to review portfolio data. When we use a GET request to the portfolio, account ID, positions, zero endpoint, this will pull data for a single account only. 
Unlike other endpoints, this only functions on an individual level. And the reason for this is because each account could have largely different position quantities, so we cannot use a generic allocation group as we had before. Thank you for watching this lesson on financial advisor management in the Client Portal API. If you found this lesson helpful, please check out our other lessons in the Client Portal API tutorial series.